Hi everyone, my name's Anthony Cummins and welcome to this video. I'm a historical researcher and author and uh, basically this is part two of the, you know, are uh, Egan Coca Ninja real? What's the myth theory about Egan Coca? So if you've not seen number one, the video, go back and watch it. It's dead easy. It's literally my last video. And we're going to be going on an extension today with part two. Uh, all of my videos are done to support my uh, authorship, if you like. So if you are interested in the things I'm talking about, and uh, if you know a lot about what I'm talking about or you follow me a lot, guys, don't forget this one, All Japan. I repeatedly put this up because it's full of mini little gems that fill in the gaps. So I know some of you guys out there have got mint information. You're really good. You know you're solid on the ninja history. But it's these bits, the flavour in the middle, that I'm trying to get across to people as well. So don't ignore books like that. If you're into ninja, it's like, ah, oh, that fills that in. That fills. It's ninja and samurai fans, basically. That fills in a lot of the um, cultural context. Okay, today I want to start by saying, so I've done part one and we've talked about how basically everybody thinks, oh, the Egan Coker, is that a myth, is it not? This is a new theory that's come about in the last few years and I don't agree with it. But let's go through it. So first of all, um, go back to number one, watch it. And now today we're going to be talking about Stephen Nogiri's theory of the Eager Coca myth. So first step, step one, make sure you buy um, Turnbull's book. Now Turnbull's myth is simply this, that e there was some form of espionage going on in Eager and Coca, but that the term Shinobi is later and or late Sengoku to mid Edo, depending. And he thinks that basically the Shinobi just used this and ran with it in the Edo period. Sorry, the Shinobi, the Iga and Koka people ran with this in the Edo period. His book is called Unmasking the Ninja or the Ninja Unmasked or something like that. Very easy to find Stephen Turnbull. Go and have a look. That's his theory. If everybody's happy, I'll do another video on that later. But Stephen Nogiri's theory, let's do this one now, the main bit of the video. So if you want to support Stephen Nogiri, go to his channel, Stephen Nogiri. You can buy his book, which is Sacred Conspiracy or In Praise of Spies. They're out on Amazon. So go and support him, support all authors who are getting ninja stuff out. So let's look at his theory. So his theory is different to Stephen Turnbull's theory. So what we've got here is ants. Main, you've got you've got four things here. Craziness on this end, which is comes out of Japan. Eager and Coca information coming out of Japan. No, not correct. Then you get what I'm saying, and you guys will know that from part one. You get what Stephen Turnbull's saying, which is probably they ran with this espionage myth and created a mythology about Eager and Coca in the Edo period. Then you get Stephen Nogiri's theory. So there's the four that go along. So this is what Stephen Nogiri is saying. Right. Stephen Nogiri has a bee in his bonnet about Eager and Coca. Why? First of all, let's look at who he is. He loves uh, Kus um, Kusunoki Masashige and Fukushima Ryu. So he's not an Eager fat and Coca fanboy straight away. So, and he gets quite annoyed with the Eager and Coca fanboys who come onto the thread. There's a few of us in a thread on WhatsApp and he's like, bloody Eager and Coca fanboys, I have a clue about history. And, you, and you know, and, and true, some of the things that are said on the internet are a little bit crazy. So, basically, what he's saying is this, and he wants to get this message across to you guys so that you can spread it in the ninja community, is that ninjutsu existed before Eager and Coca. It existed before Kusunoki Masashige, most likely. Um, but we'll go into that in a minute. And that Iga and Koka are specifically famous for one type of espionage or one type of shinobi ninja thing, not all of it. So what I'm going to do is instead of going from the nearest time to the earliest, I'm now going to reverse it and we're going to go from the earliest time to the um to today this is pretty much what Stephen believed if i've got any of this wrong it's my fault sorry but this is the basics right so china as you all guys know developed into its very very cultured system in in about the six seven eight hundreds that chinese system comes across to japan and literally everything architecture religion uh, social classes everything starts to build and create a new Japan. 
There's Old Japan, which was very much shamanistic, tribal, um, pre-Chinese. And then you get the New Japan, which is a standing army and everything's there. Chinese style, a Kyoto or other places like Kyoto, which are done on a grid system. It's all very, very Chinese. Well, they adopt the Chinese language. And basically, Japan is a print of China. Boom, there you go. Next print. So what does that mean? It means that they brought their espionage with them. Art of War is one. The seven Chinese classics, including Confucianism and Buddhism, which is an Indian, uh, Indo-European thing from Jainism. And all that comes across and bit by bit is dropped into Japan and you create this new Japan. Then, so we've got a military system based on Chinese ways, which has the art of war and other stuff in there, which we know the spies are called Kan. The gate, yep, that little gate for those who write kanji is a gate with a sun or a moon or a brightness in it. They are spies. That is an old term that is well and well used. Now, remember, for those who don't know, sorry, the next bit is the, the, the Chinese standing army in Japan, the style of standing army collapses. That means their headquarters, their barracks, imagine it like the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire were once in Japan. Obviously not, but you get my idea. There's barracks, there's roads being laid, there's like a HQ, and they're all running on a very standing army military thing, and they're sending people to quell all the different rebellions. And Japan is basically running a China system. But this creates a problem. In Kyoto, in the middle, Everybody's getting drunk. They're doing poetry. They're like, oh, yes. And I'm the great, great grandson of this ancient warrior. And I'm and the, the emperor's there. The emperor in old times in Japan, he's a rough guy. He's like gone out and quelled everything. He's brought the tribes together with the Chinese style swords. And he's like, I am the strongest. I am the emperor of Japan. I was born from the gods. And, you know, this military idea comes up. And then they just get a little bit pansy-esque and a little bit, let's write some poetry and we'll laze around and I want some nicer clothes. And then generation after generation after generation, what happens is that lavishness creates a bubble in Kyoto. And then well, the next step is that the samurai at the side rise in power. And what this means is they can no longer afford to keep a Chinese standing army. I know I'm going weird here, but this you keep with me. The fact that they can't afford a Chinese standing army means that all the superstructure it just sinks and you are left with private armies. So any espionage from the height of Chinese influence in Japan is broken up and fractured and we don't know what happens to it. Nobody knows. From this comes your great samurai heroes, your your Yoshitsunes, Yoshimori's, the... the um, the Tyra, the Genji, <laughs> Minamoto, they're different names for the same families. But basically all that starts to happen. And then the Kusunoki, the split, northern and southern courts start going. And then, of course, you get the Onin War and the Sengoku period. And from this point, from the standing army collapsing, you get these wars going on between private armies. So where, well, how is this connected to Iga and Koka? Well, this is the basic setup is inside of all those little factions everywhere... There are lots of different systems of espionage. They're sort of lost to history, but we know those factions exist. We know from the classics that people are doing clandestine things. We know people are sent spying in different areas. Of course, Yoshimori becomes famous for his connection with spying and espionage. So what we don't have, we have Chinese classics, which we've got loads of from China, and we know that's the espionage style. Those classics go to Japan. So we know what espionage they're doing because they're doing everything Chinese. It would be really weird if they weren't doing Chinese espionage. But then the Chinese structure breaks and we're lost in the dark ages of the, the espionage of Japan. What's going on? Are they creating new things? What are they doing? Are they adapting old Chinese things? We just don't know. So the next step is we have to re-piece it together. All we know is that Eager and Coca suddenly in their... 1560s to 1800s are suddenly the kings of of espionage and and, stra and uh, clandestine strategy. Oh, where does this come from? Now, Stephen's main theory is this: that if you actually check the old documents there across all of Japan, there are multiple names for um, 
espionage ex people. So for you guys out there, you should know the basic two. Kanja, which is ancient Chinese, which means spy. And then Shinobi no Mono, which starts appearing in the 1300s. Or Shinobi as, as a noun, if you like, a proper noun, a person, starts appearing in the 1300s. And Kanja and Shinobi start to be said more than the other ones. But there are tens, possibly a hundred, I don't know. We haven't put them all together. Of other ones, you've heard them. Supa, Rapa, then there's Bo No Sha, and, uh, which is a pronunciation we just found thanks to Stephen the other day. So... There's all of these little names uh, for espionage people, but they're not doing the same job. Some of them are called Kusa, those who lie in the grass. We've got ones from Natoru where they tell us it's people who hide behind the scenes or people who disrupt formations. We have um, ambush troops, people who look for gaps, conspiracy people, twisted person, those who infiltrate into different groups. There are so many names for very, a lot of different styles of um, espionage and spying and clandestine and saboteurs. And if you go to Japan in the 1400s, there's all these little names going on. Now, one of them is Shinobi and they all rise together. But for some reason, for some reason, Kanja and Shinobi rise above the rest and then Kanja drops off and Shinobi rises to the top now this is the crux of Stephen's this Stephen's problem is that that term then get in the Edo period early Edo period becomes a blanket term Shinobi no Mono becomes a blanket term for everyone doing any form of espionage and he's like well that's not true and what happens is Eager and Coca Shinobi. Now, this is a mixture of me and, me and Stephen. Eager and Coca Shinobi are really good at what they do. They're out there with the armies. They are physically there. So when you take an army to war, you can see Eager Mono, Coca Mono are in your army. Why are they in the army? Because they are literally the best at blowing shit up, at getting into enemy camps, at um, taking hostages. They're literally the special forces of the day. They're the rough lads with the sort of knives in the jacket going in like, oh, we'll do him, tech him, I don't give a shit, we'll kill him. And, you know, those are the, the rough, rough lads going behind enemy lines. But in the background that people are not physically seeing is the people who are sitting in little villages or twisting words and using these words. And they're represented by different words, not shinobi. So what happens is that the eager mono are up there doing great stuff. They are really there. They are being ninjas. But the problem is all of these other names are sucked into the ninja name. And then, oh, it must be ninja. Then eager must be the best. So Stephen's gripe is this. There is no way that he, he says eager and coca are the best at all types of espionage they're the best probably now this is what i added on to the physical side of things but all of the other stuff is just lost to us and it's gone and yet if you actually comb through all of the documents which in stephen's not defense in stephen for great that stephen is doing this he's been going through all the documents thousands and i mean thousands of pages combing them for the different names for spy in all the different places, mainly Kusanoki. And that's what he's doing. And he is saying that Eager have jumped on that. Not, not, they've not consciously jumped on it. They've literally just been like, yeah, we're mint. We do all the, we do all the blowing stuff up and grabbing everyone. And we do have a network already. Because remember this bit, Eager and Coca are sent all over the country to serve as special forces. And they have safe houses all over the country we know they we know this they literally tell us you have safe houses all over the country so they have a spy network so normal espionage gets dragged in to their saboteur espionage and suddenly they're the greatest at both and that then moves into the Edo period everything else fades away now if you don't believe this go and read the Bansan Shuka. it says other names for ninja are this 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 that's an eager mono telling you there are other names. And we got this from ancient times and we are very good at it. 
So you see what I mean? It all gets dragged in. And then what happens is by the end of the Edo period, everybody's like, Iga Mono are amazing. And then you get the major restoration where nobody really cares anymore about it. It dives off. You get to 1910 and then people are a little bit nationalistic. So 1910s, 1920s are actually quite liberal, actually. So for those who don't know what that means, that's left wing, very like hippie. And but then it turns into the 1930s and gets nationalistic. So in the 1910s, you get people doing ninja comics and how oh, this is cool. In the 1920s, people are starting discussing whether they should follow Western ways or Japanese ways. And by the 1930s, the government have decided we're doing we're doing Japanese ways and they literally rip out Buddhism. They rip out all of the non Japanese stuff and they focus on what is amazing. Kusunoki Masashige. Everybody should be like Kusunoki Masashige. He becomes very popular. And they, they then print out the show Ninki and everything to show oh, this is ninjutsu. That happens in World War II, actually. It's not a propaganda element, it's just one of the things they do. But what happens then is after the war, people start annoyed again with old Japanese things because it didn't work against atomic bombs. They were like, that doesn't work, does it? So then they were like, okay. Afterwards, they were like, did all the peace stuff and all that. But then bit by bit, they started getting interested in their, their history again. And that's where it went crazy for Eager and Coker. It was like, they are the best at this. And they, what I've just told you now, very in a speedy way, is 2,000 years of history or 1,500 years of history coming through from ancient Japan to the Chinese, through the wars, etc., etc. And what they do is just scrap all that and go, Eager and Coker are amazing at ninjas. Okay, and that's it. And this is where Steven's getting annoyed. He's like, people online, not you guys, but people out there are going, Eager and Coker, Eager and Coker are the best. Eager and Coker. He's like, you have totally missed the point of Japanese history. You have missed the point of how espionage was developed in Japan. And you've just jumped to the, not only the Sengoku period, you've jumped to the 1960s, 1970s version of Iga and Koka ninjutsu, and you've just said, oh, they are the best. And he, of course, has taken umbrage, which is the greatest word on the planet. He has taken umbrage to this, and he gets annoyed. So that's the problem with Iga and Koka ninjutsu. So what should you guys do? So basically, you've got one thing. Things coming out of Japan, Iga and Koka, even from the places you think they should be okay, our pants. It's not all incorrect, but just forget it. I am trying to bring you the most accurate information I possibly can, because I want to know it on Eager and Coca, because I didn't know it in the past, and I want to know it now. Stephen Turnbull is saying that probably the Eager and Coca people ride their wave of fame from something being good, then they ride that wave, and it becomes something it wasn't, and they reinvent themselves every generation to fit in with staying at the top of being the cool boys. That's his theory. Then you get Stephen Nogiri, which is basically saying espionage is pulled up from all the hundreds of years of Japan, and then it's stolen by Iger and Kokomono, who really do their stuff, but then people are not even checking that history and are checking literally 20, 21st century history and then replotting uh, the history and saying, oh, it came from Iger and Koka and they did this, and he's like, no. The books clearly do not say that. So that's Stephen's theory. If I've got that wrong, I'm sure he's going to make a video and tell me I've got it wrong. But I spent, after I did video one, I spent about 14 hours discussing with six people. And I literally was like dying at the end of it because Stephen is difficult. No, actually, I think I'm going to go Southern Court. Shut up, Stephen. So... Okay, so I'm going to answer a couple of um, questions from the last video in the thread. Now, basically, somebody put on there, it's Koga, not Coca. Wrong. Wrong. Get a life. No. Pete, if you see that, tell them it's Coca, not Koga. No. There's just, I'm not even going to explain it. No. And Nick Vasquez, I think I'm saying his name right, has said he's on the forums on uh, Facebook and they are saying, is it possible that Iga and Coca, or Coca specifically, are only addressed as ninja after 1920 because they are hired by the shogunate? No, that is impossible. It is impossible simply because of the Gunpo Joshu. Everybody listen to me. If you like ninjas, if you like ninjas and you have never read or bought this book, you are behind. That is what you're looking for. The three shinobi scrolls of the Gumpo Jyoshu. 
There's the Japanese and there's its circa date. Now, the reason that it just stumps it is this. This kills all those theories. So we know Ogasawara is a samurai and he, he is, according to Japanese research, so it could be swamped, but basically the history is Ogasawara was fighting in the Sengoku period and he's either on the side of Takeda or he's on the side of Tokugawa. We not, we, nobody knows which side he was on. But by 1912, he is in the employ of Tokugawa. Everyone is in the employ of Tokugawa, but he's literally in Edo talking to the people around the castle. He's there and he gives his document in 1612 to this gentleman. The gentleman then takes it to Tokugawa Ieyasu and shows it to him. And Tokugawa Ieyasu, whether he spends five minutes or an hour or he reads it all, we don't know. He says that is exactly representative of all of warfare. Now, we have only published the, fur, the, the three ninja scrolls. There are many other scrolls in it. But Tokugawa Ieyasu says that's it. So we know the date on the manual is 1619. But it must be in its first form by 1612. Now, the simple fact is, in 1619, at the latest, the latest, Ogasawara says that Iga and Koka Mono have been used for ninjutsu since ancient times. Now, ancient times in Japanese, when you're doing scrolls, doesn't mean a thousand years ago. It basically means beyond my grandfather-ish. It's basically, I can't speak to the, my grandfather. It's someone from beyond that. Those are the old days. So let's call it the fourth generation. So four generations back, so 25 years, 25 years, 25 years, 25 years, on average is 100 years. So, so Nick, in 16... 12 to 1619, a samurai is saying that for at least the last 100 years, at least the last 100 years, Iga and Kokomono have been famous for ninjutsu. And they are hired all over Japan because they are famous for ninjutsu. That predates anything. That, that puts you back to 1520. And he says that. And not only that, Tokugawa ticks it off and goes, yep, that's pretty much correct. And every other manual everywhere says, since ancient times, Iga and Koka people have been good at clandestine things. Okay, guys, that's a 20 minute video plus now. So if you've not read Gunpo Joshu, you're not up to date. It's the most important document in all of ninjutsu without a shadow of a doubt. It's on page 72 and it goes on to the end of the book. And... Um, so all clans should have a man of Iga and Koka serve them. No daimyo would be able to carry out his wishes without shinobi in his vassalage, no matter how adept the commander is at the art of war. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Thus, the people... Um, hold on. It is common knowledge. So 1612 to 1619, he writes, it is common knowledge that in ancient times, a minimum of 100 years... There were people in Iga and Koka who were highly skilled on this path. Their skills have been handed down to their descendants today, 1612. Uh, thus, the people in command of these tasks are called Igashu, the Iga group, or Kokoshu, and are hired in every clan, clan across Japan. So, no, they are hired in every clan across Japan as of about 1520. And that everybody knows this. And you should use them, even though they're not the only ones that do ninjutsu. Right, guys, um, I hope that helps. Let me know what you think. Um, please don't forget, get yourself a copy of Old Japan. It's easy, it's quick, it helps me no end. And, of course, get up to date with the other books and support all the other authors. So uh, I hope that has done justice to Stephen's theory. Um, and I hope you guys are starting to build a better picture. We need to outdo the Japanese on this. The Japanese are putting out some seriously bad things and we need to make sure we're getting it right. So you guys spread what I'm saying around the internet and tell everyone what it is for Iga and Coca. Last but not least, in the last video, somebody said, guy like, guy, me, looks like he's going mad. <laughs> somebody wrote it this way, just Anthony. <laughs> just Anthony, he loves ninjas.
So, and they're like, he just always talks like that. I thought it was really funny, actually. So I've gone down, I've liked everybody's comments, I've, I've, re I've replied where I can. Right, guys, see you later.